So there's my starting position and when my third finger falls on the push we have our first note here which is F sharp you can see the number three is the finger and you see the note on the top line is F and here's our sharp on that F line telling me it's F sharp it's all F's are sharpened by the way not just this one here all C's are sharpened okay not just the, the C's on the third space up if you're in doubt about music theory I've got some sheets you can download for nothing as well on my website so there's our first note. So where does it come in terms of beats of the bar? We're well, going to count one, two, and come in on beat three. That's not a lot of warning. You might want to count a complete bar and then two. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, and come in on that note like that. And it gives you plenty of warning and any musicians who are playing along with you. So that bar's all on its own at the top and then we come down to these next two bars, bars one and two. We don't get a label until bar three. Okay, so this is bar one and this is bar two and the bar we've dealt with is bar naught. Now you'll see that we're on the D row at the moment. Our first note is on the D row and these four notes in this first complete bar are on the D row. They've all got normal heads. Now there was my first note. The button below, finger four on the pull, will give me a G. And what I do here is quite nice and easy. It's four buttons in a row coming up the instrument. G. E, C sharp, B, and they're all next door neighbours. The timing is quite interesting. We have a dotted crotchet, a quaver, and then two quavers. Right, the dotted crotchet comes in on beat one. It lasts for the whole of beat one and half of beat two. This E quaver is on the and count of two. And then these last two notes are on three and. So it's one, two, and three and. So it's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and. So from the beginning, it'll sound like this. And like I say, nice and easy, finger four, finger three, finger two, finger one, and that's your right hand side. And it's all on the pull. If there's not a pull or a push underneath the note, just look back to where you had a pull or a push and all these will be the same. So obviously this first note is a pull and therefore all these are as well. Now. On top you've got your left hand. What are you going to do with your left hand? You have a, a capital A and two small A's. That's an A bass and two A chords. 
Okay, so A base and A chord, they are on buttons two and one on the outside row, fingers two and one I use. So there's on the pull, there's your A bass, and there's your A chord. And you do your classic um pa pa um pa pa typical three beat typical bass line. So one bass and two chords. Now it's quite interesting to see how the bass and the right hand line up. Now the A bass coincides with that first G note. The first A chord comes while that dotted crotchet is ringing. So before you play the second note on the right hand side and the second A chord coincides with this C sharp. Let's put that together. Can you hear that? So this first A chord here is on its own. It's not on its own really because obviously this G note on the right hand side is still ringing. So let's count that in in the way I did earlier and we'll play the pick up bar and the first complete bar. Pull out the bellows to start. So one, two, three, one, two. And you're into the tune. Well, you're not into the tune really because this is the turnaround. This is the kind of end of the chorus to uh, get you settled. Bit more to go before we actually get into the kind of meat and potatoes of the tune. <laughs> 